Welcome to Applied Food Science and Engineering with Prop Vigent. Starch is a great form of energy, and it would be super convenient if we could eat it instead of like this, like this. But we can't. So, why do we need to cook starch? Glucose, a sugar, is the monomer out of which the polymer starch is built. Hundreds of units of glucose bond together, like so, to form the polymer that is starch or amylose. Looking at this polymer, you'll see that there's lots of sites where hydrogen bonds might form. And this is important because when we zoom out and look at a bunch of starch molecules, we'll see that they tend to end up coiling and aligning in ways that allow them to hydrogen bond with each other, forming a pretty stable structure. The stability of the structure means that when digestive enzymes attempt to break apart the starch into its component glucose, it can't do it because it can't access the molecule adequately. And that's where cooking comes in. By heating the starch, we cause increased molecular motion, which makes space between the previously hydrogen bonded areas. By adding moisture, we swell the starch by allowing the water to hydrogen bond. That is, the water we added takes up some of the hydrogen bonding sites within the starch, swelling it and making it have more space between molecules. To see this effect on a macro scale, let's make a room where I heat flour in oil as a heat transfer medium. And when it starts to swell, add water. And you see it creates a thick gel that this gel is so solid you could use it to thicken gravy or almost as a modeling compound. Compare this to what happens when I mix the same ingredients with no heating at all. In this case, I've just made paste. A little bit of heat makes a big difference in behavior. In this hydrated state, digestive molecules have much better access, allowing starch to be an excellent source of dietary energy. Thanks for watching.